Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about how to make your own substrate and set up an enclosure for isopods, and the particular species we will be doing it for today are panda kinks. But first, I'd like to mention that I have a Facebook group that is slowly growing, Casey's Mealworm, Superworm, and Discoid Roach Knowledge Center. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. I cover a range of topics about breeding feeder insects. And with that out of the way, let's start the video. There are many things that you can use as substrate, from pre-made and formulated, to bare bones and basic. It all depends on the effort and the money you want to spend. However, today, we are going to be making our own with the intention of it being cost effective compared to most expensive pre-made substrates, but has some of the benefits they offer. This one is very simple and has been working with my isopods. I'm going to be using some organic potting soil by Kellogg's Organics. I was able to get more than I will ever be able to use for around nine US dollars. It contains a lot of the nutrients isopods need already, but we will be adding a few more things to it to make it a bit more ideal for our isopods. The first thing we add in is going to be worm castings. I got 6 pounds for around $10. I am doing roughly 1 third worm castings and 2 thirds soil. The reason we add worm castings is that it is slap full of yummy goodies for our isopods. Then we add in some calcium. In this part, I am unsure about how much to add and intend to further supplement with ground chicken eggshells. Then let's add in some moss. This will help retain moisture within the substrate. Now give it a good mix until it looks even. Let's move on to setup. Now we just add in a lump of moss into one of the corners to make a high moisture area so that the isopods have a choice when regulating their moisture requirements. Next thing for the enclosure is a generous amount of leaves. We want to put quite a bit in so that the isopods have extra heights, a greater moisture gradient, and an abundance of food. Next up, let's add a piece of rotted wood. A side note, both the leaves and the wood were sterilized in the oven for around two hours at 220 Fahrenheit since I had collected them from my yard and wanted to make sure I wasn't bringing anything into the enclosure. Anyhow, the rotted wood will add another food source and extra goodies the isopods need for growth and breeding. Cork bark is what is suggested for most isopods. However, it is outside of my budget, so I make do with what is readily available. I sprinkle some bits of crushed activated charcoal below the leaf litter, mostly for the springtails, and later on would I need to seed another enclosure with springtails, removing some of the chunks of charcoal from the enclosure will be easy. Lastly, let's add a chunk of limestone. Limestone, from what I understand, is very helpful, perhaps even critical, to the Cubara species, like the panda kings we will be adding to the enclosure. Now let's give the enclosure a good spray down. What I normally like to do is set up the enclosure fully, wait a few days, fill the soil, make sure it isn't too wet, too dry, and to see if any mold begins. At this stage, it is a good idea to add your springtails to the enclosure to help get them established. Springtails consume mold, fungi, and are perfect to pair with isopods. Once I feel right with the enclosure, I add in the isopods. I choose one corner to set most of them free and call it a day. One thing I forgot when making up this enclosure was a larger piece of wood. Again, cork bark is preferred. However, I just added a large piece of rotted wood on top of the leaf litter and added in more panda kings that I am steadily pulling from their old enclosure. Let's move on to the enclosure itself. When I first got into isopods last year, I didn't take the proper steps I should have. My mistake. All of my enclosures got overrun with powder blue isopods that I was keeping. So, deciding to take security a bit more serious, I re work their old enclosures. I had previously just put holes in the enclosure without screen. This is a mistake. Do not do this. Make sure you add screen. Whether you cut vents into the side or poke holes, use screen to keep the isopods from wandering. I have about 20 holes per side and three large vent holes on top, all covered with screen. The size of the bins I use are around one square foot and hold 9.5 quarts. This should be more than enough to house a large colony. I personally like setting up larger bins like this, even for isopods I have in fewer numbers. I know small cups and containers are typically used for smaller cultures. This is just my preference. It's wonderful to see one of your enclosures really flourish. Before we wrap this video up, I'm going to show you my zebra isopods. I've had these guys for about a year now, and I started with only 12. I made this setup the same way we did in this video. While isopods do all have varying care requirements, there is a lot of crossover between most species. And that about does it guys. If you like this video and have it in your critter loving heart, give this video a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos in the future like this. And as always, from the Gizzards and I, have a wonderful day.